Hey, you oh, want? Man. What's up? What's up, man? What's what up? How you doing? Good. Yo. Yo. All right, let's get back to Sorry our that. original. Hold on, let's get back to our original conversation, man. James says that the Eagles are going from twenty to three. Or twenty to two. What's your take on that? Uh, I said twenty to number one. That's what 20 I. Twenty to number one. That's what I meant to say. That that is absolutely crazy as hell. Uh, Washington Redskins had to give up half their uh, picks for three years to move from six to one. There is absolutely no way. Any team in the NFL is going to get from 20 to 1, not unless they just throw away their franchise for the next five or six years. Well, the the offer that was put, that was basically put on the table, not well, not officially put on the table, but what is rumored is, is that you have the 20th overall pick this year. You have the 2016 first round pick. You have the 2017 first round pick. And you have Nick Foles. So those four for the number one overall pick this year. Uh, the, but but the thing is you don't know where your first round pick is going to be in the next three years because when you give up so much to get a quarterback and your rest of your team doesn't do anything and you have to fight salary cap, next thing you know, you, uh, your first round pick in – uh, the next two or three years could be the middle of the pack again. Then you really ain't helping them with anything. Well, well it's basically on them, but I, but I'm saying this is, is if Marcus Mariota is going to be the number one overall pick, it's going to be through the Philadelphia Eagles and no one else. Well, uh, the bottom line is I've, I've said this to you gentlemen several times, but you guys are Florida State fans. You guys are Jameis Winston fans. And you're not trying to hear reality. You're not trying to hear practicality. The bottom line is a poker player is not going to show you his hand. It's that simple. This is a the, – the NFL draft is a big deal for the NFL – and for the teams that have those first four or five picks. They are not going to tell you in February what they're going to do at the end of April. And if you think they are, you're the dumbest sports person on earth. They're not going to tell you. There are, there are people on the day of the draft that don't know what's going to happen in that first pick. How the hell can you sit and say you know what's going to happen in the first pick in February? That's crazy. So all of this, oh, Jameis did this and Jameis did that and Tampa saw Jameis and Tampa saying this about Jameis and you guys are buying the okie doke. I'm telling you right now, Jameis is not the focus. Jameis is the distraction. I'm telling oh, you right now. You're telling me, and you're saying the wrong thing. I'm telling, I'm telling you, you right, right now, Jameis is not the focus. Jameis is, Jameis is the distraction. Okay, so they're clearing out. They got rid of McNown, their starting quarterback. And you're going to sit up here and tell me. No, no, Jameis no, no, no. you got to realize McNown was only brought into Tampa to help the quarterback that was already there learn a lovey system. He had a particular purpose. His purpose was because he already knows Lovey Smith's offensive system. So right, Lovey okay. brought him in for one year so that he could teach the quarterbacks at Tampa the new system. So you're saying he has stick done with his Glennon. job and now he's gone. So they're going to stick with Glennon. I'm not saying they're going to stick with Glennon. What I'm saying they're gonna, is they're, they're gonna stick with Glennon McCown gonna had a particular purpose in Tampa, a so very are, particular pur- are they, are they purpose. Are they going to stick with Glennon? Are they, you're saying they're going to stick with Glennon or get a quarterback in free agency? No, I didn't say either of those. What I, I said there, was what you think McCown happen? had a very particular purpose in Tampa. 
It's just like when Tuna I, I would go you, to man. another team, he would always bring one of his veteran quarterbacks with him because he had to teach the new team his scheme. But the, the best way to teach the new team his scheme is to have a veteran of his scheme be there. So he'd always now, bring his own quarterback with him. Lovey did the same thing. That's that's the only reason McCown was there this first year. Now, so you're basically saying you you don't believe that Tampa's going to take James with the number one pick? I am absolutely positive they are not. Okay. All right. Let's move on here. Let's go to uh, 708. 708, what's your take on the situation? Yeah, my take on the situation is this. I think for sure that Tampa Bay – is going to go ahead and get Winston. There's no way they could go ahead and pass up on it. I mean, yeah, McCown may have went on ahead and served his purpose just for that one season. But, if I remember correctly, was McCown running with Lovey? Yep. Okay. I'll go ahead and say that. But I will agree with you that McCown was basically brought in to serve his purpose. Tampa Bay, and I'm sitting there with the number one pick, and they went on ahead and they clearly got rid of the starting quarterback. They got rid of him for a reason. So they go ahead and make room for who they're going to draft. And in this case, they're thinking between Winston and Marietta. And in the end, they're going to pick Winston. It's been Mark. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's already. So, it's the so tell, the wall, me so, so, the tell me something. Wait. Tell me something, Wiley, panel. Wiley, listen to me. Listen, listen to me, Wiley. Wiley. This is what happened, in my opinion. Jason Light, Lovey Smith. They already have their decision made. They went to the owner, oh my God. and they would say, they say, hey, we want to get Winston. The owner is hesitant. So the owner's like, if you really want to do this, bring him in, let me talk to him, because we know his bad reputation. So this means yesterday so, and today. So, so the what, what is it going to mean the when they bring Mariota in? And get in good with the owner. They just want to do that. What is it going to mean when they bring Mariota in? To, to play their poker hand, to get the other teams to think, that they may still be in oh, limbo so, about Winston and Mariota. So when it's they brought Jameis in, they were showing you that's what they because want. They but when they bring Mariota in, that's just earlier. to throw everybody else off? Yes, because they thought, yes, exactly. Because they brought him earlier than what everyone else did in history. Oh, most my quarterbacks, God. Most, look, look, top, most top draft picks come in April, closer to the draft. Oh they brought God. him in now. Because they're trying to sell that owner. Because the owner's hesitant about this. They're trying to sell the owner, hey, we want this guy. We want this guy. And he's trying to get in. They trying the, This Jason Light and Lovey Smith are trying to convince the owner to co-sign it, basically. That's what it boils down to. Now, now do I get to tell you what's going to happen? Let me tell you what's really going on. Let me tell you what's really going on. You know what's really going on? What's really going on is they wanted Jameis Winston in Tampa ahead of the drop of that documentary and ahead of the drop of that CNN documentary so that they could say they had already looked at him. Because once that documentary drops and every everybody starts getting mad about that documentary, they don't want to have Jameis showing up to Tampa. So what was really going on was they were preempting the documentary to make no. sure that they could say they no. saw him before the documentary. I see but, that. Often, but often it's the owner. The only reason why the owner is actually tripping, you got to take a look at all the quarterbacks he's been picked up recently. I mean, all of them from what I've seen has been basically bust, and Tampa has not went anywhere. So I can see the owner having a hard time. That's just my opinion. My yeah. my question to the panel, my question to the panel, everybody that's on here and everybody that's listening, is sometimes you have to believe in common sense. You guys keep talking all this bullshit. Really? No, let him yeah, let let him keep going. Because he got a point here. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Tony. These we listen. Floor is yours. Wally. He there? Oh, I don't know if it. I don't know if his uh, his phone was uh, getting cut in or cut off or something like that. But um, I don't know. He may have been. But this last thing, he was bringing up a good point, and this is what we went back and forth with yesterday, uh, so about 
the thing is, is that, you know, it, it, from a business standpoint and a marketing standpoint, you would really want, if you really are interested in Jameis Winston uh, to come in for a workout, then you will really want him in a clear state or at a clear head with no distractions around him, no distractions around the training camp or anything like that. So you would really want to invite him over to your camp before the documentary comes out because if you did it afterwards, then you would you would have to do it, you know, at least a day or two days or worse yet, up to a week after the documentary is out and the public has seen it already. And then the the feminist groups and the other protesters are ready to come to one buck place and say, hey, so you're bringing in Jameis Winston to come over here to do a workout and you're possibly going to pick him? Oh, no, we can't have that. So then oh. you would have Jameis oh. Winston going in there with all of those protesters that are pretty much like, Hounding one butt place, so he's going to go in there with that type of distraction going into the workout. You wouldn't really want that if you're Jameis Winston. Well, of course they wouldn't want that because obviously people have been doing their homework. I mean, he's going to go ahead and catch a storm regardless whether or not. But the fact of the matter is, if I was Tampa, amid all that speculation, they need a player. Yep. Oh, I agree. Shot town, oh, man. Where you at? Hey, what's going on, Claude? Everybody, what's up? That's what's up? Yeah, I heard. I was saying everything. Yeah, Tony, I was saying, yeah, McCown, yeah. I mean, the McCown thing, I mean, he stuck. He was just a system guy. We all know about Lovey and the quarterback. But I kind of get what you're saying, Tony, about, you know, you know, it's a poker game, it's a chess game in the draft. You know, everybody don't want to show their hand in February, but the Tampa Bay Buccaneers do have a number one pick, so they pretty much can do anything they want. And we all know they're going to take a quarterback, but I was hearing today that they, they were saying they like Mariota too. So don't rule Mariota out going to Tampa Bay. Like, is that too late? Yep. No, mm-hmm. I don't. No, no. Mariota, the, the way that Tampa Bay – the way that the Tampa Bay offense is set up, Mariota would not fit with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Like I said, I was Tampa, I, was Bay. Tampa Bay, I, I, I know we were saying this, I know, maybe several weeks ago, maybe last week, I know, saying that, I think last week we were saying, I think, like, the way it is, I think Mariota's more of a system quarterback. Like, you know, like you said, Philadelphia Eagles, the only way, mm-hmm. which they could. They might decide to trade no one to get, take Mariota. But yeah, I, I, I'm with I'm Tampa. Say, I, 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 I think James Winston is a better prospect, and I'm they, gonna, if they smart, this. they need to go and take James Winston because they, if they mess up on this, oh man, it's something that can, it's something that can hurt for maybe ten, twelve years down the road. Hold on yep. a minute. I, I've, I've said this before, and I'm gonna keep saying it. I do not know what a system quarterback is. I don't, because here, here's my thing, right? No matter where you go, whether it's college, the pros, or even high school, if you pretty much have your quarterback as the best player on your team, then you pretty much make your offense fit around that quarterback or – you have a playbook where you get a quarterback that fits your playbook. So either way, you have some type of system where the quarterback fits your system. You don't necessarily okay. have. I agree with that. It's not like it's not like you have. Like for example, you can you really name a quarterback that's in the National Football League right now that is so versatile? that they could do pretty much any type of offense that's out there. Ooh, let me name one. Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a good question right there, yeah. So, I mean, so, many, so, that's, my thing. so, so that's my thing. It, it's not that you can't – you don't see Tom Brady 
running and running shoot offense. You don't see Peyton Manning doing an off speed offense. You don't see Drew Brees, you know, doing a necessarily a ground and pound type of offense. So when when, when people say system quarterback, it's like mm-hmm. what else is there? There is well, you just a multi quarterback out there. Well, you just named three elite quarterbacks that also are pocket presses quarterbacks. They don't really do too much runs. Right, they don't do too much runs, but, 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 but here's my thing. So you could you could go mid-grade. You could go um, Phillip Rivers. You could go, um, you know, your boy um, Russell Wilson. You could go, let's see, who else is there? I would say it's Nick Rick. Uh, Matt Ryan. Um, uh, let's see, uh, Cam Newton. Yeah Matt, yeah, Matt Ryan is a perfect example. Yeah. Matt Ryan. Cam yeah, Newton. Yeah. Um, who else is going to run down the line? Uh, Andrew Did we Lutton. mention Colin Kaepernick? Colin Ka- there you go. Colin Kaepernick. That's perfect. Is it, 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 Colin Kaepernick a... Is Colin Kaepernick a quarterback that can basically run, I would say, a quote-unquote pro-style offense where he can go under center in an I formation, which they have the personnel to do so, to do that, and also do like a shotgun spread for wide receiver, you know, formation where he's able to throw to the likes of Anquan Bolden or... um, who else they had on there? Crabtree. Crabtree. And, yeah, and, you know, maybe another slot receiver that they had. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. can, can somebody like Colin Kaepernick do something like that? We don't, like, we don't say right off the top that Colin Kaepernick is a multi-faceted quarterback that can do that type of thing. You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I, I, we all can say, but we all can say this though. So, McCown, I guess he, when he was with the Bears, the system, I think he just fixed with trusting the system what he did. So I guess when he came to Tampa, it's just, he just he just didn't get it done, man, down there. Now I was kind of shocked that he signed so quickly. Like now he signed with the Browns, but they gave him a three year deal. So that's well, Mike, you got to understand, well, Mike, you understand, man. Well, Mike, you understand. McCown is on a time limit. I mean, he's like 35 years old. So, basically, it's now whatever for him. Yeah. It, it, that's just showing how Cleveland feels about their quarterback. They just went and signed him, him to a three-year deal. But, you know, I just I just think he oh. caught on to a good system oh. last year. And he fit, and then he came to Tampa Bay. He just, he just He's not a starter. He's a backup journeyman quarterback. Oh, uh oh, uh oh. Since 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 we do have Shaitan on here, you know you know I got a question coming up and he already knows what it is because I already Yeah, I already know. Directly. I think here they heard about it too um today about that question too with the quarterback. I already know uh, yeah, they've been talking about that today. Right. Well, here yeah, we go. So what I'm saying no, not not there. What I asked him what I asked him was a couple of days ago. I mean we're we basically with the Chicago Bears that we're basically coming at a crossroads. Um you have you have Jay Cutler who's, you know, a polarizing quarterback. You know he can he can have spots where he's good. If we know that he can have spots where he's bad. But now they're coming up to a decision where either they have to let him go or they basically have to commit him for at least two seasons. So what do the Chicago Bears do here? Do they keep him or do they let him go? You talking about if he had pick at seven or just in general? I mean, in, in, well, the pick at seven is a contributing factor to what the Bears' decision would be. But I'm saying even even with that not being on the table in general, actually, you know what? You can't really say it in general this year because if you took away that seven pick and you looked at the free agent market right now, mm-hmm. you really couldn't get rid of Jay Cutler to try to get you know, a new quarterback. Nope. There's nothing out there. There's nothing out there in the free agent market that would be better than Jay Cutler. So the but thing this, is, is that here's the choice. Let's just go for land. Let's just go for land. I'll ask the question. 
do we go ahead and keep their color? My thing is this. We keep them for one more year and then try to get rid of them next year. The contract is basically too high to duck on anybody. No one's going to go ahead and touch that thing. Technically, that was uh, Phil Emery's last gift from us, from him, to us. The guy is totally erratic. Try to get one more year with this new coach. I'm, I'm pretty sure John Fox will probably do something with him. And if it doesn't work out, then double. I, I say it right now. I mean, hey, I'm, I just think, I mean, yeah, it was pretty bad last mm-hmm. year, but it was just the whole freshman thing. I, you know, it was bad on the whole offense. I think the NFL really figured out Tresman's offense last year. And he didn't make no adjustments. I kind of, I ain't gonna put all the blame on Jay Cutler, but you know, I ride with him. I ride with him. I mean, let's uh, let's let's. I mean, I think I think I'm I mean, I don't, I mean, I ain't dumped on him as well. My whole thing is, I ain't dumped on him as well. My whole thing is that the only reason why they suck so bad is that the defense be great horribly. I'm telling you, that number seven pick is going to be on the defensive player. Probably the two, three picks is going to be all on. The defense is going to revamp. Yeah. Okay. Let's put, saying, put a. I'll keep going. It was the saying today that you know that I think what's that guy's name Sal. He was saying that the Bears are kind of intrigued, kind of interested in Mariota. They say if you know, they say if he's still there or something, hey, don't be surprised if they, if they might take a shot at taking him. I said, I'm like, no, no, and I don't like him like that. If he, and they were saying too, but this I is Pace first pick. If he takes that pick and takes Mariota and that man flop, oh man, that could be his job. Well, I just think I think I think de- I think defenses go let's 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 just Jameis Winston. That's just me, my preference. I wouldn't take I wouldn't take him at seven, man. I I would go down and, and stay at seven and take defense or if you don't like where you at, which I don't think they're gonna trade down, take a Ooh. defensive player. You know what uh what else it was put um on the chat too, right? That uh they might Want to trade uh, Brandon Marshall? I don't know. Yeah, about him going to uh, the Bills. I mean, wait, 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 not the Bills. I didn't hear about that. Tex was asking me if I heard something about that. Like, nah, but they said that the Bears. Uh, what's that? Um, Harstein. He um did made a visit today, and they said you know he's deciding within 24 hours between either the Bears, the Browns, or what team he's going to sign for. But they was kind of. Secondly, they said, well, that's showing that they could, the Bears could make an inquiry of trading Marshall. That's what John Clayton says. That could be an indication. Or he just might be adding someone, you know, to compliment him and Alshon Jeffrey. Mm-hmm. We don't know Waterstein is not no Brandon Marshall, but I, I hope I hope the Bears don't trade Brandon Marshall. I'm not open either, but with the way the management is – Looking at it and thinking about it, I would not be surprised if they traded him. All right, let's put uh, let's put Watley back on here. Watley, what you got to say? Um, I, I don't know where I I don't I don't know where I got cut off the last time, but I'm getting a somebody got feedback. Somebody's recoil. Somebody's got their. Radio or television up too loud or something. Sorry, but uh, I don't know where I got cut off. This simple, guys, and again, like I said, some some of you guys are just strictly James Winston fans. Some of you guys are just strictly FSU fans. Some of you guys are just strictly State of Florida fans. But I'm telling you, if you take your emotions out of it and you look at the facts, you have two Heisman Trophy winners that have went head-to-head against each other. In that Mm -hmm. head-to-head, no, let me finish. They went head-to-head against each other. In that head-to-head, one shined and one didn't. You have two Heisman Trophy winners that went to the confines together. They completed every single throw perfectly. 
then in all of the other intangibles, one outshined the other completely. Yet every one of you want to keep saying that the one that shined the least is the one that should be the favorite. It makes no sense. <laughs> it makes Everybody no sense. Opinion. Tell me where that makes sense. I mean, to have two Heisman Trophy winners that have went head-to-head in both the field and the combines, and one outshined the other in both, yet you're saying the one that was the least shining is still the best player. It makes no sense. Can't argue with that. I'll give you that much. We're just saying from the picks and people, Jay Winston is going to go. Yep. And Jameis Winston has made more NFL throws in actual football games than Marcus Mariota has also. And also Jameis Winston, and Jameis Winston, has, Jameis Winston has brought his team back in several games. Here we go. And Marcus Mariota has not. So Here we go. you can laugh all you want to, James. It's a flat out truth. I got Cali Mike here. Cali Mike, you on, Cali Mike? Here, here we go. Yeah, Cali Mike, you on? You, you on? Yeah, you on? Hey, yeah, yeah. Give, give, me, give, me, give, me, give me one second, man. Give me one second. Y'all, y'all okay. Oh, here, here, right. we, here we go. Here we go with the insanity. <laughs> I, what, what, uh, tell me where I'm at. Jameis Winston over and over and over brought his team back. Over and over and over and brought his team back. Marcus Mariota did not do that. Here we go with the insanity. Again, oh, that's no insanity. Yeah, Brazil, you can we not talk you know about head to head? You keep can head we not to talk head. about can we not head focus to head. on the head, 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 head to head? They head to head. They play team to team, son. They no, they play head-to-head. Head. Head. So, so if you tell me, if you tell me, oh, so Jamarcus Russell, Jamarcus Russell, head head. Jamarcus Russell outplayed Brady Quinn in their games. Is Jamarcus, I mean, Jamarcus Russell better Russell, than Brady Quinn? Russell was a better quarterback than Brady Quinn. Tim Couch, Tim Couch, Couch, Tim Couch, Tim Couch uh, outplayed Peyton Manning when they played. Is Tim Couch better Tony. than Peyton Manning? I mean, come on. Oh, my God. Tony, Tony. Danny Warfel outplayed Peyton Manning. Is Danny Warfel better than Peyton Manning? Tony. <laughs> I mean, like come I on, said, man. Wiley, like come I on. This is this ridiculousness. You're the one that's speaking that ridiculousness. Like, said, said, like you said, nothing. You, you just want to, you know, uh, James, what's going to be the first pick in the draft. You, Go on, say what you, you got to say. Look, number one, Good Tony Lord. is absolutely right. Tony is absolutely right. We got to be here. Wrong. No, we got, we got people that yes. are reacting off of pure emotion here. Man, now I'm gonna run it. I'm gonna run this. I'm gonna run this again. Oh God! Like I said with this thing about a system quarterback, what in the world is an NFL throw? What, what in the world is an NFL, NFL throw? throw? An NFL what throw is, is an being NFL able to throw? throw in tight windows like that. Out, you can zip it in there. Okay, the ball 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 but James has did it in the combine. Oh my God! He completed all the throws in the combine. No. No, huh? hold it, hold it, hold it, hold uh, it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. This guy said, this guy said that you got to be able to make throws in tight spots. Okay, yep. I'm gonna make an absolute note of that, and then I'm gonna post something on the CMT page. It's going, it's going down right now. Thank you. All right, Ed, 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 you, you on? Ed. Yeah. Ed, you on? Ed Brown, you on? <laughs> He ain't on. What, you need your pit bull to defend you? (laughs) No, we're good. No, we're good. We're good. Steve, Steve, you on? Steve, you on? (laughs) Steve, you on? (laughs) Clavel's trying to form a gang to protect (laughs) him. Nah. Nah, I'm just giving everybody everybody the opportunity to speak. Steve, Steve, what's your take on this? just come together like Voltron. (laughs) <laughs> hey Steve hey. Hello oh. Yeah Oh god oh. Well, what? But you know honestly to be I mean like I said Like I said be true, You know I've never been the biggest uh, Mario the advocate But like I said it's not This isn't going to be a thing Like I said the, You know the dude Like I said dude, dude can play man It's not 
it's not going to be a thing to where you're going to draft one dude and the next dude is just going to be a buffoon. I mean, like I say, you can't, you know, like I say, you can't, you know, you can't, you can't judge him like that. I mean, like I said, I mean, mm-hmm. Mar- I mean, Mariota has done what he was supposed to do, you know, and like I said, when when he was asked to do different things, he's shown that he can do that. So you know, it's not like I said, it's not like he hasn't, you know, it's not like he hasn't shown that he can do, you know, you you never, you know, you've never seen him be, you know, uh, not accurate. You know, like I but, said, but kind of, Kelly Mike, like Tebow, Kelly Mike, kind of to me, trail. to me, it's like well, this. We we know we got the uh, Peck, uh, Pacquiao Mayweather fight coming up, and everybody finally. swear, everybody swears that Mayweather is better than Pacquiao. Okay, but they get in the ring and Pacquiao whoops his ass. And then all of a sudden, everybody starts talking about, but Mayweather's hands were so much faster, and he could move so much better, and he ducked his head so much better. That's different. That's one on one. He lost. That's different. That's one on one. Hey, yeah, that's not a fair comparison. You're talking about one on one. No, it's not the same. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's eleven on eleven. It's eleven on eleven. It's eleven on eleven. You know that? It's eleven on eleven. Carlton Mathis, you don't want me to step into this one. Don't do it. Please. You gotta move uh, on. Yeah. Oh, I don't care. I don't care. I got I can hold my own against any of y'all. I can hold my own against any of y'all. No, you can't. Yes, I can. I've done it before consistently. I've done it consistently. Not in this one. Ain't no thing to me. It ain't no thing to me. Not in this one. But let's get this going. You've already lost because you burned yourself. No, I ain't already lost. You've already lost. Please, you've already lost. Beat yourself. You buried yourself because constantly, 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 me and Tony told you that Oregon was going to beat Florida State. Thank you. Yeah, but they, 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 they didn't you say Jameis was going to beat. Time. They didn't say, yeah, they didn't mean the way Oregon was going to beat Weston. You're talking about hand-to-hand. Thank you. They weren't even talking about you already lost. You know that hand No, but I said this. I, I said this. Say that one more time, Tony James. And, yeah. and, and, and Tony That don't mean nothing. That don't mean nothing. He said, that doesn't mean nothing. He said that he, Marcus Mariota, he said that Marcus Mariota would outperform Jameis Winston in the Rose Bowl. And he say did. Say one more time, Tony James. He did not. I said, I said that Oregon not. was going to beat Florida State, and they did. They did. Yeah, one more time, Jim James. James. He didn't outperform James Winston. James Winston threw for more yards. James Winston threw for more yards. Let me make this clear. And Mariota threw a pick. Mariota threw a pick. James Winston didn't throw anything. Let me make this clear to you. Let me make this, this, let me make this clear to yes, you. So, you, you know, do, so... It is what it is. You're, you're the one that's getting emotional. No, I don't know no, what you're saying. You're the one that's getting emotional. No, 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 to make a play in the first quarter. Three times they were in the red zone. Three times nope. they didn't score touchdowns. And one of those times, Jameis Winston could have scored a touchdown and didn't do it. So you really want to say and, and all that. Yeah, I do. 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 Hey, 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 James. Hey, James. No, no, that does no, not mean that James Winston is not going to be a player NFL prospect. Then Marcus Mariota changes. You know that. You just don't want to admit this. Now, James Winston can throw in tighter windows than Marcus Mariota can. Marcus Mariota throws a wide open people. That's why James Winston will translate better to the NFL. James Winston can throw better from the pocket. Marcus Mariota cannot. Okay? Tally now, so, so, another thing. So, so, James so, so, Winston has more of a yeah. charisma. He can command a locker room. Marcus so, so, Mariota cannot command an NFL locker room. You won't let me talk. You've been talking for hours. Let me talk. And let me get you in because you don't want to hear none of this. That's why you interrupted me. Thank you. Now. Wow. Okay. Wow. Go ahead. Yeah. Now, 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 can now, I, now, 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 can I, now, now, hey, James, James can Winston I ask you this question? It's going to translate better to the league than Marcus Mariota. You book that, well, son. You book it. All right. James, you can I ask it. you this question? No. And then, man, you're you already had your opportunity to talk. We got to have other people talk. You already right, had your one opportunity one question, to talk. James. One question, James. 708. 708. Say what you got to say. 
What, what, what oh, question, man. James? Okay, listen, y'all are going back and forth about this thing. Hey, hey don't keep going. Hey, give it away. What's let your take on this, man? All right, let me ask a question. What day is the draft? Um, April 31st. April 31st. We will find out then who's the number one pick. But if anyone, I will say Jameson will go, then Mariota. That's my opinion. But as, when the draft comes, we will all find out then. Yeah. Why would okay. you pick James Winston over Marcus Mariota? Why would you pick James Winston over Marcus Mariota? Uh, track record. His track record basically was a little bit better than Mariota's. Sure, Mariota and had well, all the in the Rose Bowl, but overall stats, as well as including throws and all that, Winston did better. I'm not going to buy that. Are you kidding? And Winston, I'm not going to buy that. delivered what a national championship. What fucking Rose Bowl did you watch? Line, you can I'm talk. not going to buy that. Winston delivered I'm a national championship. Marcus Mayer. What? 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 I'm not that going to buy that. That is very biased on your point. There's no way in hell you going to tell me James Winston was that. the better quarterback in the Rose Bowl. Yeah, they say he's the better quarterback in the Rose Bowl. He's the better quarterback, period. Yeah, I'm because you're biased. Thank you. Don't hate, don't hate. Just, get, just, you just face it, man. You I'm not going to buy that. I'm don't buy it, man. Buy that. Nobody's selling it to no. you. You ain't going to buy it anyway. Want, hey, look. <laughs> I want everybody to go in reference to this, and then I'm going to go. Because y'all want to keep making these points about James Winston <laughs> like you really want to step forward. But like I said, I'm going to let y'all go, and then I'm going to shut y'all down. So keep going. Because y'all, cause y'all I, I really got... want to y'all, – y'all I mean, I know Tony, what Tony's saying. I know what Tony's saying, but I, I just want all of y'all to keep on going about James Winston first. James, I got one question for you before anybody else says anything. It's very simple. Because Clausel Mathis, for the last six months, has been talking about Florida State's ability to come back, and that what, that's what makes Jameis Winston such an NFL quarterback. Well, I don't see that bitch-ass nigga coming back in the Rose Bowl. What happened? Is that a question? I, Yes, I want to know what happened to that comeback ability in the Rose Bowl. Yeah, because Davin Cook kept fumbling the ball. Y'all's MVP. Oh, it's, it's the receiver's now, fault now, now, right? Let's, 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 let's go here. Let's go here. It's the let's go here. Let's see, go here. Do you Stanford. see what I'm saying, James? Stanford. Do you Stanford. see what I'm saying? Let's going. go here. Stanford. Stanford hit Marriott in the mouth. He couldn't come back. Arizona hit Marriott in the mouth. He couldn't good. come back. When the so, team does good and win, it's brought back. But when the team from, does bad, it's everybody else. James Winston has brought else. back Florida State consistently through games throughout the year. He brought Y'all Florida State going. back in a national when, championship when the team game. Does good he good and brought wins, Florida State back in a national championship it. game. Marcus Mariota got hit in the mouth bad, by Ohio else. State, and he could not even bring Yo. the team back to victory. The game, the way the game was Yo. played was like, hey, we're going to shut down the run. We're going to shut down everything. Mariota beat us, and Mariota can do it. Mariota does not have the cachet to command an NFL locker room. Jameis Winston has the cachet to command an NFL locker room. Jameis Winston is going to be the number one, number one quarterback in the draft. And he will be a super star player in this league. You book that. He will be a super star player in this league. He will be better than Cam Newton, I'll tell you that. Right now. You know. Oh, no, I know about that. Yeah, 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 I know about that. 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 I said it. 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 I know about that, man. Hold on, man. Hold on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's going to be better than Cam Newton. Wait, 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 wait. First off, first off, you, you, you haven't really gotten in here to hear him talk about James Winston being the Allen Iverson of the NFL. Or the he will be the Allen Iverson of the NFL. Now, he will be the Allen Iverson of the NFL. Since you went on ahead and tried to defend James Winston in the 2015 Rose Bowl game, let me run you by... Not only James Winston, but the Florida State University football program. Now, let me break it to you like this. Tony has said for the longest time that James Winston at Florida State was a what a two win difference for the Florida State football oh, program. God. The previous year, they went what? 
ten and two or eleven and two in the regular season with the Thank you. Preach Florida State University. Let me run this by you one more time. This is the Florida State University. One of Preach. the most famous storied college football programs in the country. Most of our years, they finished top five in the nation. You mean to tell me that the Florida State University, as a program, couldn't really destroy the likes of Wake Forest, Duke, North Carolina, North Carolina State, Maryland, well, not Maryland this year since they were in the Big Ten, but Georgia Tech, Miami, Virginia, Virginia Tech, that they had to come back against the likes of Boston College. This is the Florida State University we're talking about. This ain't this ain't no North Texas. This ain't Northern Illinois. This ain't Akron. This ain't Idaho State. This is Florida State. They should be able to destroy those teams with no problem. Destroy them. So when they went against the likes of Florida, they didn't even have a quarterback. No quarterback, but they had the defense. Davis Winston had four interceptions. And yet you were still talking fast. Leading up to the 2015 Rose Bowl, after they had went back and forth against Georgia Tech, and you said that they were going to be Oregon there. You said that James Winston was going to go in there and pick them apart. Your words. And what happened? He had an under 30 quarterback rating. He got outperformed, period. I don't care if Marcus Mariota was on the other side. You had the Oregon defense that outperformed and made James Wilson look like he looked, period. And this is the Florida State University. That shouldn't have been at the Florida State University ever, period, against the University of Oregon. Never, ever. You cannot defend that. Preach. All right, let's get this first and foremost. Florida State was was not a top-tier program for extended amount of time, from about yeah. 2003, from about 2003 to about 2012 or 13, Florida State was not a top tier program. That it was not. It was, it was not. It, I'm not a damn lie. Florida State was not a top tier program. Florida oh, State in the God. 90s. Hold on, let me. Let me, let me in the 90s. Hold on, you don't let me finish. In the 90s, Florida State was a top tier program. Okay. And that, how do you and they, know, and then they fell here. off. Hold up. And then they fell off. They fell off around that 2003 to 2013 range. And they just Manuel stopped being the top, they top had college. They Ponder, that, that, that's just Manuel. like Notre Dame must, they could, must not they were be the not, top college they did anymore, not right? Have the swag of the former Florida State teams. The only time okay, they so began to get words, the no of the not a previous Florida anymore? State teams was when Jameis Winston got there. Jameis Winston so, single-handedly so brought so the Notre swag Dame back to Florida State. Notre Dame is not a top State. football Jameis college Winston anymore. Jameis Winston single-handedly brought Florida State back to being an elite college football so, program. So, so, so Notre Dame is, is not a top did. college football team Notre anymore Dame because they have right won a championship no. in 20 years. In terms years. of performance on the field, Notre Dame is not an elite college football program. In terms of performance oh, wow. on the field, they are not. What type of recruiting? They may what have money. Recruiting? They may have money, but they are not an elite college football program oh, right now in terms no. of the performance wow. on the field. Are you kidding are me? You hearing they this? single-handedly brought them are you brought Florida this? State back to being oh, an elite oh, this. college Look, football hey, program. Tony, and you Tony, won't even let me finish Tony. because you know good and well I'm telling your ass is the truth. Oh, you know are you hearing well. this? All right, thank I you. am hearing this. I am hearing this loud and clear. I know that he did not say that for 10 years the Florida State University program was in a tailspin. For yeah, 10 it, it just disappeared. Years. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It, it just disappeared. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold up, man, hold up, man, hold up. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something. How's that is? A hundred percent correct. Florida Get the State fuck was, ever. He was. <laughs> they were super guarded. 
talking about? Thank you. <laughs> the only team in the state of Florida that was doing something in those years was you out. The school yeah, you went to. Okay. Uh, yeah, 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 thank you. Yeah, that's true. an elite football uh, team. They were. They were. They were. They were not an elite yeah, program on the football field. They were not. They were not. Uh, y'all not remember? Y'all not they were not. remember Chris Rich? Chris Rich was there for like four years. Y'all remember Chris Rich? What did he do? Uh, oh boy. Uh, it's the truth. Are you on here? Y'all know it's the truth. Y'all know it's the truth. They were not an elite college football program. They were not an elite college football program from 2003 to 2013. They were not. Are you on here? Hold on. What time are you talking about? Is is Kelly Mike on here? Kelly Mike, you on here? Yeah, you need your backup. You know you need your backup. Go ahead. I can take on all y'all. I don't care. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to find out who you're talking about. What's not a lead program? Kelly Mike, are you on here? Hold on, hold on. Eight six five. Hold on. What's your question to me? What's your text question to me? Kelly Mike, are you on here? Hold on. Eight six five. That's you, right? Eight six five. Or that's you, right? Eight... Yeah, that's me. Oh, you're 865? Okay, my bad. The guy, yes. other guy, what's his name? Um, where is he from? Uh, I want to talk to Kelly Mike. Kelly Mike, are you on here? Oh, yeah, no, you're talking about me, 708 Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about you, 708. What's your, what, what's your question? I was trying to find out which program you're talking about, man. Oh, Florida State. <laughs> what I'm Thank you. I said Florida State on the football field was not an elite program. From 2003 to 2013, they were not an elite program. They were not. Not, oh my not God. one of those years. Actually, not you know one what? I will give you that because of Mike Bowden. Say it again? I said, I'll give you that because Mike Bowden, after he left, pretty much it went downhill. No, yeah, no, that, no, 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 no. It was like his last years. No, it was like that 2003 to 2007-ish or something like that. I think those were his last years. He wasn't even that good then. They were not, they were not an elite program then. When they had, like, okay. like uh, Steve just said, Chris Ricks, uh, Drew Weatherford, uh, uh, what's his name, the guy who played for the Vikings, Christian Ponder, and I even put EJ up there. When EJ Manuel was there, they were not an elite program. They were not. You guys, hold on, 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 You do realize yeah. that you're the same person that through the first four games of EJ Manuel's season, you said that Florida State might have been one of the greatest football teams you've ever seen. That's a lie. I did not say it. You're lying. You're lying. I did not say that. That's a lie. That's a flat lie. Well, look well, up the tape. Hold up. If hold I said that, look up the tape. Look it up. Look up the tape. When they when they beat those first three schools and they scored like 198 points and the mother school scored zero points, you weren't saying that they were the number one team in the nation? That's when, that's when Jameis was there. That's when Jameis was there. No, that was Let that me finish. Was let me finish. Let me finish. Kelly Mike. Oh, let me finish. Kelly, no, let me finish. I, let me finish. I, I, hold on. Let me finish. Even when EJ was there, even when EJ, was there even when EJ Manuel was there, Florida State was not an elite team. Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston single handedly. How can you be? Can I be the number one team back in the old days? How can you be the number one team in the nation and not be elite? They were never the number one team in the nation. They were never the number Can one I team talk in the to nation. Kelly Mike? You said you said they were the number one team in the nation. These are your words. You said it. No, Can I, I did not. To Kelly Mike. Kelly Mike. So you're so hold on. So you were lying then, or you're lying now? Uh, you're you're lying on me. That's what you're lying. That's the problem. Kelly Mike. Oh, so, you, oh, so you're you're saying so you're saying you're I'm saying that you're lying, Kelly Mike. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Yes. Okay. So you're <laughs> okay, Kelly so you're, Mike. You're, you're saying you never said this, so if I provide proof on next week's show... Provide the I, proof, I, I, son. I, I, provide the proof. Yes, go ahead. Do it. Kelly Mike. <laughs> Kelly What's Mike, up, I got a question for you. Kelly What's Mike, I got up, a question buddy? for you. When was the last time UFC won a national championship? 04. That won. is 11 years. So are you going to say to me right now that for the last 11 years... USC has not been an elite college football program. Nope. Nope. Just Wait, because they won it, they just because they did not win a national championship, does that stop them from being an elite college football program? 
No, it doesn't. Mm. That's all, all, Thank only, you. Only one team, only, that, that, only that's one, ignorant. Only, 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 only no, one no, 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 only, no, only, no, only no, 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 you guys are not getting it. You are not understanding it. Like, that, let's that think about, let's look, at, let's, look right, let's, oh, let's look right now. Let's look at elite college football programs right now. I'm talking about teams that are always in the top five every year. Okay, you got Alabama. You got Ohio State. Those
from all the way from 2000, even though, because you got to understand, we can say in the, and we can put it like this. Miami wasn't in the ACC until like 05, 06. So, yeah, Florida State was still winning conference championships. No. But hold it. <laughs> you on, dude. You on. Hold it. it. My bad. Hold it. 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 I have been a headache listening to this. <laughs> a headache. Because I'm listening to somebody say that Florida State was not a good program in the ACC from 2003 to 2012. So, what is that? <laughs> no, Clausel Mathis said it. Clausel Mathis said it. No, so I said they haven't been an elite no. program. No, let me let me no, make sure no, I understand. No, 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 I want to make no, you no, understand no, no, what I said. No, 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 Okay. As a matter of fact, I said they haven't been an elite. They were not an elite program from 2003 until Jameis Winston got there. That, I, I, I tell Mike, me where I'm wrong. Cali Mike, are you on? Is Cali Mike on? Yeah, Cali Mike should be on. It doesn't matter if he's on. Your response. Where you at? Cali Mike. He should be on. Looks like he stepped away from a little bit, but. What what the point that he made was that he said that you were all over Florida State in 2012. This is what they did at the beginning of 2012. The first game they won 69 to three. The second game they won 55 to nothing. The third game they won 52 to nothing. Two games afterwards, they were a top five. Team. Well, 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 that, their first loss was at one point to NC State. Then they still went through another winning streak. They were still a top five team. They were still in the hunt for the national championship. Then they well, had that well, home game against Florida. They well, lost well, that well, game. That year? Oh, the Orange Bowl. Because they were the ACC champion that year. So that's one ACC championship that they won, okay? So then, after that, the only other championship that they won in the ACC was 2005. But within the ACC, other than Virginia Tech, there has really not been any other school that has dominated the ACC other than Florida State. Miami has never, ever Never won an ACC championship. Never. We, I know that. And I admit so, that my I'm an elite program. Right. So what's your point? But the thing about but the thing about but the difference between Miami and Florida State is is that Miami had sanctions put on them. True. So yes, true. Florida State did have their down years where they lost six games and they were basically trying to push Bobby Bowden out. But as a program, the Florida State University is is up there with USC, Texas, Oklahoma, Notre Dame as a named university, the Ohio State, Michigan, and Alabama as the prestigious football schools. They're not, they're not, trying, they're not trying to hear truth, James. They're not trying to hear now, the truth. Now, a, now, a reference to, now, a reference to elite status, Right. That is, yeah. up to, that is up to the eyes of the beholder because there are times when there are teams that make runs. Alabama has made a run. U.S. has made but a the run. Thing about, the thing about elite status is you never lose it. Michigan is an elite yes, football team, and they ain't won four games in six years. They ain't elite then. That's what I said on the field. Hold on. You not understand what I'm saying. I, I, I said I on the field. At, I don't put them at Michigan elite. Michigan is an elite prestigious. football team. They might no. be in a swamp, 
but they are an elite football team. But, but why, no, that's where you're not understanding. You're not y'all not understanding where we're coming from. What I said was they're not an elite team on the field. That's what I said. That was the premise of what I said. I said since 2003, Florida State has not been an elite program until Jameis Winston got there. Even with EJ oh. Manuel there, they were not oh. an elite. Team. No, you not. USC no, 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 has not been no, 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 an elite team. You're using the wrong USC word. The word that you league. should be using is no. perennial. They may not be a perennial team that everybody fears, but Florida State University is an elite football team. Football program. Yeah. Hold on. Let, let, football let, me, program. Me give you, let me give you a different perspective on this. When we do, when you do high school football recruiting, let, let's let's look at it like this. When you do high school football recruiting and you say somebody is an elite athlete, they're an elite athlete in high school, right? Those five stars, the four stars, but when they get to college and they bust and they don't perform well, they're no longer considered elite, are they? So if you think at it in that aspect, as a team, they don't perform well, they're not considered elite. They are yeah, that is, no, no, see, the thing is, when you are a five-star coming out of high school and you go to a Florida State where everybody at your position is five-star, then all of a sudden you are all elite. It's not that one is more elite than the other. You're it's all like elite. This. you got six five-stars at one it's, spot. It's like, this, it's like this from an academic standpoint. All right? right. And, and, we, and we discussed this, we discussed this yesterday. When when you're coming up in high school and you're a high school genius, depending on what high school you're in, you could probably be, you know, by far the smartest person in your school, the valedictorian, straight A's, you know, walking their walks in, no problem. But once you get into college and you go to the Harvard or the Yale or the Columbia or the Colgate, you're not Where everybody was valedictorian? Yeah, where everybody is valedictorian. It's not like you could waltz in there and say, hey, this is easy to me. It doesn't necessarily work like that. So in this case, when it comes to the Florida State University, you're going against other five-star recruits that are ESPN Absolutely. 300, uh, Scouts 100, or, you know, that type of thing. So if you don't pan out, yeah, you were a five-star recruit in high school, but when you're going against other five-star recruits in high school, that may have more experience than you then you might not be able to stand out like you really did in high school. So how does so how does that explain when these teams, case in point Miami, had elite recruiting classes and did nothing with them? So how, okay, how that's you, coaching. Well, well, that, that's, well, that's, that's coaching. That has nothing to do with the program itself. People are still going yeah, to I MSU. Mean, People yeah. are still going to the University of Miami. They are yep. still recruiting five-star athletes. It has yeah. nothing to do with the coaching. It has to do with their ability to be an elite program. They are an elite program. That's why five-star well, athletes still go to them, winning or losing. Well, here's well, here's the point where that's sketchy on, on what you just uh, said. What was that, Eddie? Or, um, was that Eddie, right? Steve. Steve, Steve. Well, here's the thing that's sketchy about it, and, and, and like Tony said at the beginning, it's basically coaching because everybody, a lot of people that are Miami Hurricanes fans really blame the coach on there. Why? Because they see that, you know, by the time that most of these players are done playing at the University of Miami, that they're doing pretty good when it goes to when it comes to being in a senior bowl or, you know, those East versus West Ryan classics or when they get into the NFL and in their first couple of years they're doing good in the NFL is because they were good to begin with. It's just that the coach was just solid as hell. 